JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for February the 4th. I am Haralam Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the, Asia, the Asian session Thursday. It gained the most versus the pound, the Kiwi, SEC and the Swiss franc in that order, while it underperformed only against the Australian dollar. Now, the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie and the weakening of the safe haven Swiss franc suggests, uh, suggests uh, that uh, markets continue trading in a risk-on manner yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the Kiwi combined with the strengthening of the US dollar points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, uh, most major EU indices continue to drift uh, north on hopes of uh, faster economic recovery, with Italy's FTSE MIB gaining the most after former ECB President Mario Draghi accepted uh, the task of trying to form a new Italian government. That said, investors' morale softened during the U.S. session, although data suggested that the U.S. economy is recovering faster than anticipated. The final market services PMI for January was revised up to 58.3 from 57.5, while the ISM non-manufacturing index fell by less than anticipated to 59.9 from 60.5, while the forecast was for a slide to 57.3. On top of that, the ADP employment report uh, for January showed that the private sector gained 174,000 jobs, more than the forecast of 49,000, while December's print was revised up to minus 78,000 from minus 123,000. In any case, market appetite is more and even deteriorated during the Asian session today, perhaps hit by tight uh, liquidity in China after the nation's uh, short-term interest rates uh, rose again. As uh, for our view, it has not changed. We stick to our guns that the vaccinations, the monetary policy support around the globe, and the large fiscal package in the U.S. are a blend of developments which could keep the broader investor morale supported. However, recently we noted that um, that the inverse correlation between equities and the U.S. dollar is fading. In other words, the U.S. currency may have started losing its safe haven status, and this may be due to better than expected U.S. economic data. Recent releases suggest that the world's uh, largest economy is recovering faster than many may, ha that, than many may have expected, which lessens the likelihood for additional easing by, by the Fed and thereby allows the greenback to recover some of the ground it, it lost uh, lately. Now, staying in the FX world, the British pound was yesterday's main loser, with its traders awaiting today's Bank of England monetary policy decision. Its previous meeting proved to be a non-event, with officials reiterating that they stand ready to increase their QE purchases pace should market, should market functioning worsens. However, with the UK CPI's rising by more than expected in December and the employment report for November coming in better than expected, we don't expect any change in the bank's policy settings at this gathering. Therefore, all the attention will fall on the bank's economic projections and its findings on the negative interest rates uh, study. Recently, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey played down the prospect of negative interest rates and it remains to be seen whether the findings will be on the same page, namely that interest rates are not as likely as previously, namely that interest rates are not as likely as previously thought 
to to fall into into the negative uh, territory diminishing even further such a likelihood may be pleasant news for gbp traders especially following the brexit trade accord between the eu and the uk however for the pound to extend notably its recent gains the economic projections would have to be less pessimistic than many believe the UK entered a full lockdown in January, with the government hinting that this may drag until March, a situation that may weigh notably on the British economy and thereby hinder any potential uh, recovery. So, uh, and as for uh, the rest of today's events, apart from the Bank of England decision, we also get the US initial jobless claims for last week which are expected to have declined slightly to 830,000 from 847,000 the week before. We also get the US uh, factory orders for December with headlining orders expected to have slowed to 0.7% month over month from 1% uh, while no forecast is available for the core rate. As uh, for tonight, we get the RBA's quarterly monetary policy statement and Australia's retail sales for the fourth quarter, which are forecast to have slowed to 6% quarter over quarter from 6.5%. We also have one speaker on today's agenda, and this is San Francisco Fed President Mari Daly. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.